All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about it because football is here, you guys. And of course, you guys know I do not own the rights to these videos. So I can't show you the whole video, so I do my little click through. Some of you guys really take issue with it, but it is what it is. Uh, monetization and all that good stuff. But let's talk about the miracle story that is on two fronts. Let's 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 just get this straight. For one, let's talk about this guy right here, Shehe Giuseppe. All right, you don't know his story. What? In a nutshell, because it's a go listen to Flomo Raps. He talks about it. He breaks it down very well. But this young man here did some incredible stuff, went through some incredible things uh, in high school and college. Um, uh, nobody really wanted him in, in, um, in the college world, you know, and he did everything he could to get noticed. And finally, he was just like, he, for one, he was broke as heck. Uh, he uh, pretty much took a line of credit, uh, a credit card that he had, and, and, and just blew it all just to get to uh, the Browns and said, you know what, I'm just going to sneak into the practice. And what he did was, you know, the roster was already full, and he said he knew one of the Browns players that, you know, one of the, um, he doesn't play anymore. I forgot what his name is. But uh, he said, yeah, I know him. So they were just like, yeah, come on in. So he went in there, was busting it out every practice, even though his name wasn't on the roster. And he just showed up to play. And he never lost faith in himself. I mean, from homelessness to just all out, just broke. His faith was never broke. He was like, I'm going to do this. Nobody wants me, but I'm good at what I do. And the thing about him is he constantly practiced. He was constantly practicing his technique of being a special teams guy, a return guy. So here he breaks at 86 yards on the Redskins. And uh, I'm not sure if this is preseason games, but, but I think it is. It's preseason games. But nonetheless, you show up, you do your thing. One block and he's yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you do your thing and trust and believe. The coach is going to be like, yeah, let's go. Now, another thing here is the Browns themselves. The Browns are creating a lot of electricity in there. They have the troublesome Odell Beckham. Nonetheless, Odell Beckham is still a threat. He's still a deep threat. Still got a good pair of hands on him. The o o Odell Beckham situation isn't like uh, he's an older player that isn't any good. He just got some, you know, off the field issues that needs to be handled. And if you handle them right, heck, you're looking at you're looking at a guy who can go to another team and, you know, this being a second team and just turn up. Now, the problem has always been with Cleveland is their line. A smaller line, not like a Dallas Cowboy or a Pittsburgh Steeler line. Uh, right now, they're third in the AFC. You know, it's always been their line. And this is why I tell you, Johnny Football and uh, RG3, both were on the Browns for a short time. I think that once they saw, um, for one, they got rid of uh, RG3, but I'm telling you, they did them a favor. RG3 is with the Ravens now, which is a lot bigger team, a lot better team. And what's ironic is they were the Browns at one time. But nonetheless, I think Johnny Football was just like, nah, <laughs> I'm not going to come out here and get banged up. But the, the thing about it, Johnny Football was the perfect quarterback for them because he was a scrambling back, a Jake the Snake Plumber type, you know, same size as Jake. I think Jake might have been a little bit taller. Jake played for the Cardinals at one time. I like Jake because he was a great, you know, scrambling quarterback, Doug Flutie-ish. 
And I was like, this is what you need. You don't really need an RG, a hurt RG3. You need a new RG3, somebody who can scramble. But RG3 can't scramble anymore. So RG3 was begging uh, the Redskins. He was like, listen, I want to just leave me in a pocket. They're just like, no, you're not that type of quarterback. So you're not a McMahon, a Culpepper, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're just, you're just, you know, Broadway Joe. You're not one of those type of quarterbacks. You don't have the size, and you don't have the, you know, you don't have the Brett Favre Iron Head ability. RG3. So the answer is no. Well, my point is that the Browns are looking like uh, a team that's going to be a threat. And I've already given who I thought was going to do what. And I gave credit to the Browns. I said first round playoffs, and that's gonna be it for them. They'll lose in the second round. But they will go to the first round. It's gonna be just like the Bills, what, a year ago, two years ago? They finally made it into the playoffs, lost in the playoffs, but you know what? The Bills were happy. So that's what I'm looking at here for the Browns. I'm looking at the fact that Antonio Brown is no longer with the Steelers because of the love affair that ended between him and uh, the quarterback and the quarterback just putting him out there on the radio and saying all kind of things and then not throwing to him for like half of the freaking game. You know, not throwing to Antonio Brown and you can't really do that with the number one um, wide receiver. So they had, you know, their issues and Antonio Brown moved on to the unexpected uh, Raiders. I'm not feeling that whatsoever. Not whatsoever. So we've lost Bell as far as the Steelers. I'm from Pittsburgh. We've lost Bell and we've lost Brown. So I'm not, I'm not too excited about Pittsburgh getting out of the first round. Heck, they might get beat by Cleveland. I'm just being honest. I, I'm just being honest, Mike Tomlin. You might get beat by Cleveland Browns, not the Ravens this year, that haunts you every year. Cleveland, okay? They have a decent quarterback. They did okay last year. Uh, shoot, they faced down uh, the Ravens last year and lost. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right before they got into the playoffs. So you can't say that Cleveland isn't a threat. And, you know, they're just looking better and better. So big ups to Cleveland. Big ups to um, uh, Giuseppe. I hope you get that check, bro. And I hope they keep you around. And, uh, uh, you know, I hope you do good. Anybody who has that much faith in themselves, faith in the Lord, and just goes for it and says, you know, I'm just putting it all out there. And then you show up and you do good. I hope it happens for you, big dog. I'm with you 100%. And yeah, that's just the way I feel about it. It's the celebration. Everybody was celebrating. So, you know, go dogs. Not really sure uh, I want, well, I don't want Pittsburgh to lose because, you know, that's, I just don't. But, you know, give them hell, dogs. Give them hell. I'm out.